and welcome to Flamecast. Take two. Because I started re- recording, but not recording. Because you're too busy drinking your beer. Yeah. Man, you guys missed the opening of my beer, which was pretty lame because it didn't make any noise. But <laughs> Yeah, but we all felt the side effects after having learned that Todd forgot to hit the record button, um, you know, as we were progressing. So that's Todd. This is Travis. Welcome yeah. to the Flamecast. <laughs> Thank you, Travis. And we have to point out again that this is episode, or not episode, but podcast, Flamecast, number 37. Woo! 37? Yeah. It's like a Christmas miracle. Yeah. 37, again, for uh, people that didn't listen the first time, which was everyone except for (laughs) you and me. 37 from Clerks. Yeah. Kind of throw that in there. But anyways... uh, yeah, it's uh, been a couple of months since I've been recording one of these because, hey, I've been busy. People have been busy. Travis has been busy. What Everybody's do- been busy. What has Travis been busy with? Oh, maybe a Star Wars celebration down in Orlando. What? Yeah. You suck, but... Well, you know, Todd, I'm sorry to say... That you know, it was unfortunate you you were not able to join us because it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, it's probably a good thing I didn't go, but I'll get into that like later on. But <laughs> <laughs> already <laughs> then, there were unforeseen uh, circumstances that required lots of money. We'll just say that. But anyways, oh, that, that always mm. sucks. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Um, first day i guess was uh kind of a bit trying to get into the into the convention unless you knew someone or worked with someone yeah so the four the poor folks on the regular access badges um as I, i've mentioned before they the line for them the first day was out and around the convention center and down the road and it got to the point where the the local news had their helicopter come out and uh, were you know they made it to the news as to how bad that line was and how long it took people to get in there, which was you know I, I felt bad for those folks. That part of it had to be a horrible experience. Um, but luckily for those of us uh, that were part of um, you know the you know vendor badges, you also had folks who were at displays like us there um, had a different access badge, so. Thankfully, we did not suffer through that. Yeah, uh, Chris and Darren, who are my stars from Connect More, they were down there and endured the first day, and yeah, they were pretty disappointed because, I mean, not only did they, you know, pretty much camp out overnight, and they didn't get in for the, you know, the big, uh, you know. Well, it was not just George Lucas, but a lot of the Star Wars uh, stars up there. Yeah, you had the the fortieth anniversary special presentation they they had done, and um, so yeah, George Lucas was there. Harrison Ford showed up as a surprise, um, yeah. although I I think he actually had to show up. I would imagine because he didn't make it to Celebration Anaheim due to his um, small little plane crash incident. And for some reason, I think he was probably obligated to show up to that one, and they just passed it off and had him come to this one instead. But it was great to see him there. Yeah, well, I guess according to uh, Warwick Davis, he landed his plane on I-4 to come in, so... (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) If only that was true. (laughs) Yeah, I love that little jab. That was awesome. Yes. But, uh, so speaking of, of Warwick Davis, um, uh, my friend John, who is also there with us as, as part of our, our crew for our display, um, the, he was the opening night we got there. The opening night or the second night we were there, anyways. He was going into his uh, hotel and, and going in the elevator, and Warwick Davis happened to join him in the elevator. So uh, you suck, John, but way to go, buddy! <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, right after they did the uh, the little celebration stuff, they went right into the tribute to Carrie Fisher, which 
I I was watching the stuff online, and uh, yeah, for for day one um, streaming, uh, not so good on the streaming. <laughs> yeah, it, it was uh, it was cutting out here and there. Was, you know, like, but at least um, you know they had uh, you know the the full things like posted later on, so I still got to see it. It's, just not live but <laughs> yeah. yeah they they had a few technical difficulties with some things but you know like we were talking about as the door uh for the next couple of days it uh um it it helped it, you know it, they got some help they were getting things corrected and it was a much better uh experience yeah so you, you did get to sit in on uh on that whole thing didn't you the nope oh you didn't no yeah. so um when the the um the floor opened uh for everybody which opens up at 10 a.m um you know we had to be at our display and since our display was interactive we actually had to have people there um working with it and so for those who haven't seen it yet uh what we had done is um some a local group of ours that uh we have a Facebook page with the Derby City Pit Crew, um, and we've been building large-scale props. So for a uh, celebration, um, we were invited down uh, based on the initial prop we did, which is a one-half scale ATST Scout Walker that uh, stands about 14 feet tall. And then we had included a pair of um, one-to-one size uh, speeder bike replicas. And then on top of that, we decided to build a replica of the the bunker on Endor that you see the Rebels uh, break into. So we had made that whole display, um, and we made it interactive so folks could come in, sit on the speeder bikes, and you know get a picture. So we had a crew of at least four to five people who the entire you know when the floor was open, um, we had to have crews there helping people, you know, cycle through that whole um, scenario. So that was, it was fun, but, uh, it, you know, that was a bit of work, um, but it was well worth it. We raised some money for a good cause and um, had a lot of fun with folks. Yeah, when you had people come in and sit on the speeder bikes, was there a, a charge for that? Nope. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't charge for something like that. Um, however, we were raising money to be uh, donated to the uh, Norton's Children's Hospital here in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, so if folks wanted to donate, we more than welcomed it and, um, you know, pass that along to the Children's Hospital. But, yeah, we definitely, yeah, you know, we, there is no fee to, to sit on there. Um, I think awesome. that's just... You know, we, we do a lot of work for charity just with uh, our members who are also part of the 501st Legion. Um, you know, all of our stuff is volunteer work, and this is just, you know, a, a little bit different uh, exploration of that. <laughs> Sounds like a dogfight upstairs. <laughs> so, yeah. Hey, so pre- <laughs> Yeah, I can actually hear that. So that, that's interesting, Todd. Um, there, there is no discipline in Todd's house. <laughs> Yeah, it's mainly wicked. A little killer. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know how you take care of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> um. Yeah. As you were saying. So, <laughs> as we were saying. So you know, we, you know, that's part of the reason we did that was to you know create an experience, a unique experience for folks that, um, you know, have a, a love for Star Wars like we do, and uh, you know, hopefully raise some money for a good cause and have fun doing it yeah so i i think you did it the right way take note wizard world <laughs> yeah I, well, i'll I, get into that later but. okay <laughs> I've, I've got some feelings about wizard world that they can fly kite but you know that's that's their business model and i guess if it works for them great but yeah. yeah, but no. So celebration was fun. You know, they had uh, you know with that going on, and we had a lot of, um, you know, there were a lot of displays that were there, and a lot of folks have created some wonderfully marvelous um, replicas uh, of different things. There was a, a Tie Fighter that was there that was really impressive. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> they had part of the Millennium Falcon interior in there. Uh, they had a couple of I wish I could remember the name of the beast the the 
the one beast in The Force Awakens in the desert where um, the rider was trying to abduct uh, BB-8. Oh, yeah. um, yeah. So they had one of those there. Um, you know, so a lot of fun stuff like that. But uh, you know, we were lucky uh, when you're watching online through the, the, the various um, reporting sites like IGN. Um, they had us on there as uh, um, you know a, a great attraction that was that celebration. So we were very happy oh, cool. to get that response. Mm-hmm. Yep, and I think both, uh, at least Darren did, maybe Chris as well. But I know that uh, Darren went and sat on one of the speeder bikes at your place. So oh, great! Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, as busy it was, I might have totally missed him when he came through. I don't know if he was even dressed up or not, but. Um, I know one of the days, maybe it was day two, two or three, he had a Imperial officer uniform, which looked really nice where people were actually asking him if he was part of the 501st. <laughs> oh, wow. And he's not, I'm like, man, you need to join up because these are yeah. pretty spiffy in the pictures. <laughs> uh, dude, if you're, if you're listening to this, get out to the 501st website confirm that you know your your costume meets the criteria and if it does get on board dude yeah have some fun with that because one of the uh uh benefits of that is meeting weird al like Why, uh, yeah. certain someone <laughs> yes 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 that so that awesome second time uh well i should you know the first time we did it the actually had a That's concert right. here in louisville right. um so we did get to meet him and that was great and then uh at celebration on saturday night the 501st legion had a, a what they call the 501st bash and uh they had a weird owl come in and he played for about 45 minutes or so um so that was a, a unique experience he, <laughs> he he played for like the first half hour or some of his more obscure stuff that uh you know wasn't quite mainstream to what we're used to, but they didn't finish it off with um, quite a few of his uh, hits. So it uh, yeah. it was fun. It was a good time. Awesome. Well, yeah, it sounds like it was a pretty happening place to be, and all I could do was watch it on a stream. <laughs> or Todd. Yeah. Well, you got two years to save up so you can go to the next one. Yeah. Any inkling on where that's going to be? I uh, knew there had been a lot of rumors back and forth. Uh, at one point, it was you know talking back to Anaheim. Uh, uh, then it was going to be over in France. Uh, then San Diego. <laughs> uh, so, um, but somebody else God brought damn it. There's like the middle part of the country. <laughs> yeah, but when you're Disney, and somebody else pointed this out, if you're Disney, and you have a new Star Wars theme park opening, yeah. wouldn't you want to have this party near your theme park? <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, there's a possibility it could go back down to Orlando. Um, you know, I I want to wait and see till they you know decide when they want to announce it. Um, they they could be working out deals with people on you know funding and and you know what it's going to cost to to have the places and whatnot. So, well, it'll be interesting to see once how that all plays out. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I'll try to save up. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. No, that goes. Yeah. Put your kids to work. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of the kids, two of them went with me to, as I previously mentioned, the Wizard World Comic Con in Minneapolis this past Woo! weekend. So exciting! Yay! Uh, I mean, the the guests were great. They had uh, Peter Capaldi, the, the current Doctor Who. Um. They were supposed to have Jenna Coleman as well. Oh. However, she was not able to make it, as we found out. Um, well, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Then we had uh, oh, James Marsters. Um, Michelle Nichols was there. Uh, gosh, who else? For some odd reason... Charlie Sheen was there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm like, how does this fit in? I, I, I don't know. Mm. And then last but not least, John Berman. Oh, my God. He was hilarious. <laughs> yes, he's actually quite entertaining. Yep. Right away, I mean, we tried to sit in on uh, you know as many of the 
auditorium uh, talks as we could. And we were there for the full Behrman uh, show. And, yeah, he comes out in a short dress and <laughs> granny panties on. And, <laughs> and then after a while, he went and changed behind the couch and put on a T-shirt and and uh, Dockers or something like that. <laughs> But yeah, he was hilarious. I, yeah, I would funny. go see him again. Yeah, I, I mean, he's he's always very lively and entertaining. I, I've seen him at a different convention where um, the guy who played the Green Ranger from the the Power Rangers TV show, um, he was at his booth, and his fans were cheering him on or whatever, and Berman actually snuck up through the back of the booth to startle him. And just have fun with it, and uh, you know, just John Berman is, is hilarious. And like I said, if you have you have a chance to see him do his thing, it's worth it. Yeah, yeah. It seeing him in person, he's he's a lot more like his character Captain Jack Harkness than mm-hmm. he is Malcolm Merlin. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, he's like Harkness, but turned up to 11. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Um, but yeah, otherwise, uh, <clears throat> I mean, just walking through the um, big room of all the vendors and such, um, I, th- this is one thing I was actually disappointed in. <clears throat> I mean, it's a Comic-Con, all right? There was one whole vendor there that was actually selling comics. <laughs> oh wow! I'm like, there's something wrong with this picture. Uh, but yeah, and then I get over there and I'm I'm starting to thumb through the comics. He's got them all in his you know long boxes on a few tables, and I'm thumbing through them and they're like in no order whatsoever (laughs) I'm like I am not going to thumb through all these thousands of comic books trying to find ones that I need when there is no order to this I mean there was somewhat of an order because it was like DC Marvel well yeah that cuts (laughs) it down to like maybe (laughs) 50-50 right but uh, and then yeah Corey had noticed the same thing Corey was there (laughs) went along um and he wanted to uh see some of the ones that they had like behind the the tables where he needed permission to get back there (laughs) Uh so he's he's back there and he's looking at the ones that are actually rated and you know they're in their hard plastic um containers and uh yeah he found enough to buy what was it? Like three hundred and fifty dollars worth? Oh wow! It might have been more than that, but <laughs> yeah, he. Uh, I think he got a whole six comics. Oh gee! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wicket. <laughs> Trying to do a podcast. <laughs> yep. Um, so... You know, I'm just saying that. If you let the other dog sit on him, he'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. Um, so yeah, as Corey's like trying to go through the comics that he's, you know, picking out, kind of hanging around there. Then I noticed, well, some of these boxes he actually does have some type of order to, because I found one box where it was like Star Wars comics and something else and something else. So like, oh, okay, so I'll thumb through those, and then I saw two boxes over from that uh, Doctor Who comics and Ooh. Star Trek comics. I'm like, oh, oh my gosh. Well, there we go. This is what I need to page through. So I went through those, and yeah, I found three Doctor Who ones that I didn't have back issues, and so I'm like, all right, I feel happy with this, and then Corey had to point out that you know, if you buy ten, you get ten free, and they were they were like three dollar 
comics, you know, for all this stuff. <clears throat> so I'm like, oh man, I okay, I got my Doctor Who ones out of the way. Well, I'll go through the Star Trek ones and see what I need. And yeah, like 15 minutes later, maybe I finally have enough to bring my level up to 20. So <clears throat> yeah. So uh, yeah, I get my comics and. <laughs> As we're uh, kind of looking through the the, uh, the schedule, it's like ah, Peter Capaldi's on the auditorium stage right now. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> Quick run! So we get over there, and hey, he started at eleven. We got there about eleven fifteen, so we missed fifteen minutes of it. But I mean, we saw forty five minutes of it. How was yeah. that presentation? You know uh, that went uh, actually pretty well um i tried taking some pictures from out in the crowd but uh uh, the lighting was just terrible for trying to get a picture (laughs) (laughs) and then the camera i was using is just the camera on my phone which that's worthless when you try to zoom in so um but yeah he I know someone else had made a comment on Facebook to me. It's like, well, did you understand everything that he said? Because his accent kind of gets thick sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, actually, surprisingly, yeah, I did understand everything because uh, maybe I'm just used to it now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hearing him on, on the shows, you get accustomed to it. Wicked, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Hey, no getting in the last word. <laughs> wow. He did a little. <laughs> right there. That. <laughs> like, tell one of the children to go play with the dog. <laughs> he probably thinks that I have someone down here that I'm talking to. Oh, God. He's like, I have to go see. I have to go see. <laughs> uh, anyways, so, yeah, we saw, saw Capaldi decided to go get some lunch and uh, come back and we're like well they don't make everyone empty out the auditorium in between people so it's like you know, we'll get in there early <laughs> and so we'll have good seats for, for Bearman so uh, getting in there early we saw about 30 minutes of James Marsters which I didn't plan on seeing him but yeah, he was actually pretty fun to listen to as well. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, then saw Barrowman and and then we get done there and like yeah, what is it, like four or five o'clock somewhere in there. And uh well I had Savannah and Sean with me. <clears throat> and Savannah had bought a few things in the dealer's room. Sean hadn't bought anything, and I'm like, "Why well, are you gonna buy anything, or, or are you good?" And, um, yeah, he ended up getting over to the Saber Forge <laughs> uh, booth. <laughs> He's like, "Oh, I'm thinking about buying one of those lightsabers." I'm like, "All right, well, I'll take a look." And so yeah, they had uh, a couple of them that were like a convention special. You know, $99. And so he's kind of looking at those, but he started looking at the other ones that were like 149 Ooh. And, uh, yeah, you found one that was a pretty good replica of Luke's Return of the Jedi lightsaber. Uh-huh. So he's kind of thinking about that one. And then, you know, if you want the full, you know, sound effects and all that, um, it's not 149 anymore. <laughs> and you? <laughs> no. Um, for 149, yeah, you get the blade, you get the the saber itself, and uh, you know it lights up. But yeah, if you want sound and special effects and all that, uh, try doubling that price, 300. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. You, you're good with 149, you know. You don't need sound. 
Unfortunately, um, we brought Corey. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Corey's like, no, dude, you need the sound. You need the sound. <laughs> uh, Corey, Corey we, yeah. we thank Corey for his enthusiasm, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but when it comes to uh, trying to get him to, like, splurge, nah, it never happens. Nope. He only makes other people splurge. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Sean went and forked out for the big bucks. <laughs> well, you know, I guess here's the whole thing. Is he happy with what he got? Did You know, is he enjoying it? Well, then, yeah. more power to him. Yeah, he had a long day that day. He had to drive down from Fargo uh, in the morning. And then after the convention was over, drive back up to Fargo again. Oh wow! Yeah, well, it's it's in the middle of finals, so okay. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I got to study yet for my finals on Monday and Tuesday, and so yeah, it was a it was a one day thing for him. Well, again, it goes back to the point: did he have fun, and was he able to still get good grades? Well. If so, awesome. If not, well, we learned a valuable lesson then, didn't we? (laughs) (laughs) My comment was, okay, now you need to hurry up and find a job. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Someone's going to pay for that. It's not me. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah. And then, you know, in uh, these comic cons, you get, uh, you know, a lot of the comics artists that, um, you know, will sit and, draw for you, give autographs, stuff like that, or or just be there to sell their stuff, you know? And, uh, like, two years ago, Neil Adams was at the Comic-Con. I'm like, oh, awesome! (laughs) Neil fucking Adams! (laughs) But, uh, (laughs) Neil wasn't here this time, but uh, there wasn't too many names that I recognized, but uh, one guy did stand out, and the guy was totally awesome. I don't know if you've heard of him before, but he's Guy Gilchrist. And he is responsible for doing the animations for oh, Teenage Mutant, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Muppet Babies. Um, there's a few other shows. And I, I think you... I think he drew on Tiny Toon Adventures, Tom and Jerry, um, Looney Tunes back in the 80s, 90s. But, uh, yeah, I I walked by and he started up a conversation with me. (laughs) Oh, wow. (laughs) I was like, wow. Because, yeah, he, you know, goes and introduces himself and shakes my hand and and then... uh, Wicked, shut up! (laughs) And uh, so, you know, I had mentioned, I'm like, yeah, I used to watch Muppet Babies probably longer than I should have, but (laughs) I watched it all the time, Saturday mornings, because what else are you going to do Saturday mornings? Uh, Exactly. (laughs) And he's like, oh, that's awesome. And then he started talking about, you know, uh, Disney is trying to make a new Muppet Babies, and it sounds like it's more... Uh, he, well, to put it mildly, he wasn't too impressed with the, uh, animation that he had seen for, mm-hmm. for previewing it. And he's like, you know, they'd think that, uh, <clears throat> they would ask me and the other guys that worked on Muppet Babies, you know, back in the eighties to, you know, be there for, you know, consultants or something, you know, producers, right. He's like, nothing. No calls whatsoever. And I'm like, yeah, that's pretty disappointing. Because, oh, I, mean, I mean, he, yeah, he that, had a good show going back then, and they knew how to make it work. You'd think you'd want to tap into some of those resources, but. Uh. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the challenges you have nowadays with the, you know, depending on who's heading it up, you know, maybe something where, well, no, we actually want to try something different. We want to try, you know, make it. You know, instead of just being a reboot or whatever, it's something fresh. Yeah, you know, and I, well, I can appreciate it. I mean, you, you see these things sometimes, and they just do not turn out very well. Yeah. Oh, that was one of the other things he did. He did uh, 
after the Muppet Show ended, Jim Henson wanted to do a comic strip for the Muppets. And it was this guy that ended up uh, doing the comic strip. Mm. So, by himself. <laughs> this guy. Yeah, because <laughs> his name is Guy. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it was a little, you know, fascinating, you know, insight and talk with the guy. It's really awesome. That's so I'll cool. stick a link to his website for people that want to check out his stuff, because... Yeah, pretty cool. <clears throat> cool. Um, let's see, what else do we have there? That pretty much summed up the day. But, uh, yeah, I, <clears throat> would, I, would you, I was okay with it, but... Uh, would, would you say it wasn't... Was it worth the money you spent? Do you think it had a lot of room to improve, or...? Um... It could use some improvement. I mean, there were improvements over last time that I had gone two years ago. Um, you know, for one, they got to use the auditorium <laughs> <clears throat> instead of uh, you know having them like in one of the the ballrooms instead. But yeah, the auditorium was pretty nice. Um, but yeah. Get some more comics vendors in there, please. <laughs> yeah, well, I think you know the 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 whole um because this was Wizard World, right? Right. It, did it? Um, you know, I think Wizard World has been struggling. You know, they've had some different issues going on. I just don't think they got the same pull that they used to, and you you start to see a lot more local conventions stepping up. Um, and doing some things, so you know that's that's one of the challenges that you have is that um, you know which which ones are really going to be worth it anymore. You had you know you go back three four years ago and you had a lot of folks fighting to get in that space because it was yeah. you know the, the next big thing. So <laughs> yeah, that, that dog is, is killing me. I'm gonna have to. Who let yeah. him out? Yeah. Who, who let him out? <laughs> yeah, you better find out and beat beat that child. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but yeah, speaking of uh, other Comic Con, smaller ones, um, yeah, in a couple of weeks there's this MSP Comic Con, which they have two of them a year, one in the spring, one in the fall, as far as I know. Anyways, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I went to the one in the fall, and it was like. You know, five dollars admission, and you know a lot of comics artists, and then yeah, quite a few comics vendors. It was amazing. So, and, just to, to, to plug uh, a, a local one here in Louisville, we got uh, Fandom Fest coming up uh, at the end of July. Right. So, you, you might appreciate some of the lineup that they have going on so far here. Um, just to throw out a few, um, Paul McGann, Ooh. you may have heard of him, uh, Eighth Doctor, uh -huh. um, with uh, Daphne Ashbrook, who is his companion for that. Yeah. Um, some other folks I don't recognize from, um, like uh, Skeet Ulrich from Scream and The Craft. Um, mm. I'm trying to think of some other. Uh, Peyton Witch from Stranger Things. And you've got. Uh, Oh wait, this uh, gentleman named uh, Spencer Wilding. Um, Spencer Wilding. People may know him better as um, Darth Vader from Rogue One. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, also, uh, uh, Ingv Ingvild Delia, who was the stand-in for the Princess Leia in Rogue One. Oh uh, yeah. That's um, right. Yeah, but a, a Paul Casey who has uh, he did uh, Admiral Radis in Rogue One. Okay. Um, oh, who is this? Well, this is uh, Julie Dolan, the voice of Princess Leia um, from the like Rebels cartoon. Okay. So, Phantom Fest is actually turning out to be rather interesting this year. Um, oh, plus I got this headliner, this gentleman named um, uh, Weird Al Yankovic. So, yeah, he'll be here again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, yeah, and, and one thing I will say about the, the Phantom Fest folks, they, they do have a 
you know, they are pulling in a wide range of um, gas, but they also do have some, you know, different exhibitors when you talk about the, the comics and whatnot. At least they, they bring in some variety and hopefully that, you know, will turn into a, a an awesome convention this year. Yeah, sounds like it. Awesome. Oh, and plus they'll have some folks with a giant uh, Star Wars type display just saying could be there. It's very nice. Yeah. People may want to come see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you guys built it. You got to show it off. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so that's our... Uh convention experiences the past couple of months yep <clears throat> so moving on a little bit over here have you gone to see guardians of the galaxy 2 yet why yes yes All i have right. and your verdict uh, i have i have mixed mixed emotions on it really so you have the first Guardians of the Galaxy was phenomenal. It was a breath of fresh air. It was different. It was it was just it was a great movie. This one had great moments, and I mean there are parts in it where I, I laughed so hard I had you know tears um, <laughs> from from some of the stuff they were doing. Um, but it, it seemed like to me the the parts of the middle stretched a little bit. And I don't know if I was just expecting more or, you know, what I was expecting. But, you know, from personal experience, it, it seemed to, you know, get stretched a bit in the middle. But, uh, you know, other than that, I mean, I, I really enjoyed it. It was, it was well worth going to see. Um, but it's just, it's tough for me to rank it against the first one because the first one was just so well done. Yeah. Um, yeah, myself, yeah. I guess I I I've been avoiding like any rumors or any of that stuff for the movie, so everything was kind of fresh for me. Mm. And as far as comparing it to the first, yeah, it's kind of hard to do. But uh, I mean, I I'd still rank it up there with the first. Yes. Um, <clears throat> oh yeah. Don't don't get me wrong. I, I mean, it's it, it's up there. It is one of my favorite ones. Um, but you know, it, to me it was tough. That first one just, I don't know, really hit a home run for me. Um, but, you know, they, they had moments in, in number two that were, like I said, that there's some of the stuff, some of the, you know, ongoing jokes or, or whatever, you know, and they delivered them. They they did such a great job on delivery. Yeah, yeah. I know some of the, some of the parts from the trailers got cut out, you know, just... Yeah, it's you know, happened a lot cut lately. Here and there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like with another uh, <clears throat> movie that we've seen, but uh, yeah, <laughs> that one even more so. Oh gosh. Yeah, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I I thought it was pretty enjoyable myself. Um, let's see. Yeah, Chris Marler was was there. Tina Marler. Corey, myself, um, yeah, I think it was just the four of us, and uh, uh, Rachel wasn't interested, of course. And, what? Yeah, but why? Just not into those movies. <laughs> and then the next day, um, yeah, Shelby ended up going with some of her friends to it. And she's like, "Oh, that was so great!" <laughs> <laughs> so. Man, she's like living in the the age of like awesome comic book movies. Well, <laughs> somebody else. There was something that was talked about the other day. Um, that it's you almost call it the age of the nerd. And you know, yeah. it used to be you know in the eighties that the 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 nerd culture was. You know, you you didn't go out and talk about the fact that you like Star Wars, so you liked you know the comic books, whatever. And now in this day and age, it's, you know, it's in, it's mainstream. Star Wars is mainstream. Yeah. Um, your comic books are mainstream. They, they've done such a great job with 
what they've put out there. And, you know, that's to me, that's accolades to, you know, Disney, to Marvel, you know, Luke's film, all those guys. Uh, DC, try a little harder, please. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they've put out good product. And, and to me, that's that makes all the difference because um, while the award shows obviously are, are not um, run by <laughs> folks who are interested in that type of thing, um, yeah. I, I, you know, when they make good quality, compelling movies, that goes a long ways towards, you know, building, you know, building that franchise, building something that people will enjoy and they'll want to go back and see more. Right. Right. Yeah. Just listening to, uh, Kevin Smith's review of the movie, <laughs> he's like, uh, what's his name uh, Michael Rooker he's like he should get an Oscar for this <laughs> <laughs> I'm like yeah that would be great but yeah, unfortunately it will never happen yeah probably not but I, yeah I mean that's another performance where you, you don't think that his character of Yondu is you know is not a, a you know main character per se and yet this time he was an exceptionally compelling character yeah and it's kind of nice to see, you know, in, uh, I guess, especially in sequels where you get people that, you know, they, they were evil in the first one, you know, to an extent. And mm-hmm. second one, not so much where they're actually joining up with the heroes. <laughs> right. It's kind of nice to see that change in them, you know. Or the fact that you realize that what, why they were being the way they were makes more sense. Right, right. You know, I mean, that's one thing for folks is, okay, it's one thing to be evil, but, boy, when you can actually, you know, give a reason that says, okay, I understand why you're evil. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Instead of, I'm just evil because I'm the evil guy. No, yeah. Be evil but, for a reason. Yeah. For him, it was, you know, pretty much a, you know, he had to do it to, you know, protect that don't um, give away anything. People may not watch it yet. Oh well, yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> Damn it, spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> Stay don't away spoil. from spoilers, people. Don't Damn be it. a spoiler, Todd. <laughs> but at the very least, you know, his reasoning wasn't because, you know, sand is bad for you. I mean, just saying. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you don't get away with uh like killing a bunch of innocent children and come back exactly. and get to be a hero. <laughs> yeah. See, there you go. Wait, but wait. <laughs> uh, well, one thing we forgot to talk about, one of the main things from uh, the Star Wars Celebration, the motherfucking trailer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You see it was that? O- like, it was okay. It was okay. <laughs> Well, of course it is a teaser trailer, so you're not really going to get much from it other than a few visuals. and A few visuals, a few things, a couple misleading things that people may not have caught, but that's okay. Yeah. Such as a, a, that whole part of the, the Jedi must end. Right. right. Okay. M- my whole thing is that when I listen to it, and I, I pumped up the volume and listened to it, in my opinion, that is not Mark Hamill's voice. I really think it's uh, what's his name, Bob Benicio del Toro. I think that is him. Interesting. So yeah, folks, if you haven't listened to it lately, listen to it again. You probably have to turn it up a little bit, but listen to that part where he saw at, at the end, the end part of it there, where he says that um, you know it's time for the Jedi to end. I honestly do not think that. I, I don't think that's Mark Hamill talking. Oh, I think I that is misdirection. I guess we'll find out. Um, I was thinking he was just being like emo Luke and, <laughs> you know, he all depressed and crap. And, well, I mean, and maybe, uh, you know, Ray turns his, uh, turns his optimism on and, you know, starts some training. But when she first meets him, maybe that's the way he is. It's like, uh, yeah, but my whole thing, if it, well, if he feels that the, the Jedi should end, why is he training her? That's why I'm thinking oh. that's the way he was when she first, you know, has a discussion with him. But later on, he changes his mind and starts the training. 
That's my thought, anyways. Yeah, but but also, if he knows there's evil like Kylo Ren out there, again, why would he want the Jedi to end? To just let the evil win? No, I think he wants to go out there and stop it. And I think the bad guys want to end all the Jedi. So, my hypothesis, my theory, we'll see how it plays out. Yeah. All right. Well, from there, I don't know if you've uh, been a big one for watching the Marvel TV shows on Netflix or not. Uh, I started out with the Daredevil, and I am way behind on everything else since. Uh, well, <laughs> you better start getting to that a little bit, because uh, you, know, you got the Defenders coming up pretty soon. Yeah, I saw the trailer for that, so that looks interesting. Um, I have been keeping up with the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. program on television, um, which I also enjoy. So if uh, the Netflix series are... Also solid. I I will put forth an effort to catch up with those. Yeah, they're they're solid. Um, criticisms that you hear about Iron Fist. Well, I heard them before I went into watching that, and I'm like, what are these people's problems? Because <laughs> I thought it was an excellent show. Okay. So just like all the others, I'm like got to complain about something i guess but. yeah <laughs> well i mean it, I it is it. it's yeah i i will go into it with with an open mind and see once what they present yeah um each one of them has its qualities i mean you you watch jessica jones though and that's that's some depressing television <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's yeah. good it's good but depressing <laughs> Um. But yeah, and then uh, Doctor Who started up again. Um, yep. Which I don't know if you've been keeping up with that or not. Yeah, uh, yes, I have. Yeah, you're you're one up on me because I haven't watched the last episode yet. Um, there are some strong points about this one, and some weak points. But I'll let you watch it. it first, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the episode before that reminded me a lot of another episode back in, uh, oh, let's see, that was the first, uh, actually the second, uh, story that, um, Matt Smith had with, uh, or Matt Smith's doctor had with, uh, Amy Pond, mm -hmm. where they find the big, uh, uh, British ship out there that's actually a creature and it's kind of a slave and <laughs> right yeah yeah it reminded me a lot of that episode which I'm like eh. yeah I think they made it original enough to kind of get by but that's about all it did was get by on that one yeah I mean there was I mean there are some interesting differences on it but yeah again very similar thing going on yeah, a reuse of uh, uh, <laughs> basically a story. <laughs> I was going to say a plot, but it, it's a little more than that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll see yeah. how this goes because it is Capaldi's last season. So. Yep, and they haven't announced who the replacement is yet, I don't think so. Okay, your thoughts. Um. Debate's been going on about this for a few years now. Male or female? Oh, I think they'll go female. Think it, think they can get away with it. I think they'll change it up like that. You know, well, I mean, the executive producer that's uh, going to be taken over here has said that he's not going to change the sex of the character just as, you know, like a gimmick type thing. Right. And I think they might might want to take a look at uh how Marvel has fared in its diverse um changes that it's been making in its comics. Uh -huh. Um I mean you've got well known characters and superheroes that 
it's not the same person anymore. Now we've got, you know, like in the case of Iron Man, now you've got, you know, a teenage girl. Um, Thor is uh, no longer male. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, things like that. And enough to the point where um, I can't remember who it was. Someone from Marvel making a comment about um, that di- the diverse characters and that's why their uh, profits aren't as well as they have been or something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say. But I, I think, it, like you pointed out, though, is that if, if there's not a compelling reason, if they don't create a story that, you know, inspires people to read, you know, what's going on or why it's going on, that's the whole problem. You can't... You know, just make a change to make a change. Well, you know, you look at the fact yeah. that they took, you know, Captain America and, and now made him a Hydra agent in the comic books. Okay, well, yeah, there's an uproar about it. But then, you know, they come back with, oh, just wait, you know, it's part of a storyline, it'll play out. Right, right. Okay, well, that's all well and good that, you know, you have the storyline. Is it going to be a year from now, two years from now, or is it, you know, where is it headed? And then, you know, look at the fact that you, you took an iconic character and just basically said that the entire, you know, premise of him has been a lie. Yeah. Well, so. I think it has been, maybe in like one of the last issues, they've revealed that uh, the Red Skull is behind um, the changes in the timeline. So he's altered time so that uh you know Captain America is a Hydra agent and so on and so on so Red School Red Skull can rule the world so Right. So yeah it's it's all a plot and I kind of figured that from the beginning I'm like they, they wouldn't just do this without some good cause. I better not. Yeah, you know, eventually yeah they'll get things straightened out and you know you'll be back to the cap that you've always known. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, well, you know what we should do? Probably the fan film of the month. Oh, do we have one? Uh, yeah, I was looking around yesterday, and uh, uh, there was a few cheesy <laughs> videos <laughs> out there. Some of them, like, totally computered generated where the characters are a computer and everything it's like eh, i i tend to go towards the live action <laughs> right and uh yeah there was one that i came across it had just been released like really recent um uh, when was this may 4th so f- five days ago um it's called star wars destroyer Hmm. And I mean, there's not much story to it, but the special effects are awesome. Um, <laughs> you got three X wings, and they're taking on a star destroyer, and some of its, you know, tie interceptors and such. And mm-hmm. uh, well, the uh, star destroyer ends up getting a, a little disabled, and it's heading like directly at a planet. <laughs> so they need to like change the course of the star destroyer. It's going to hit a certain city on the planet. Okay. And uh yeah, it, it's short enough. You know, not too much of a story, special effects good. Um you know, characters were likable enough, but uh yeah, I thought it was it was worth mentioning as a fan film of the month. All right. I'll have to check that out, and obviously you'll provide a link later. Yes, I will. Um, yeah, we'll have links for, uh, oh, gosh, a lot of stuff this time. Because I'll stick in something there for the Star Wars Celebration. They've got a recap video uh, for that. We'll throw on the tribute to Carrie Fisher. Um, of course, we got to have the Last Jedi trailer. Yes, yes. Um, someone did make a video for the Wizard World Comic Con <laughs> from this past weekend. Yeah, it's a little cheesy, but you get an idea of 
you know, some of the vendors that were there, a lot of the costumes, um, kind of, kind of neat to see. I tried to find myself in the background, but was unsuccessful. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. <clears throat> yeah. Although I only did go one day and it was a three day thing. So yeah, that that's going to reduce your luck a little bit, unless you did something to stand out. Although the guy that I had seen, God, wicked, hush. Lord, I, yeah, it's futile. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, the uh, the guy that did the video with his friend, they look totally familiar. I'm like, I remember seeing those guys, and a lot of the people that they were showing in the video, the the guy must have taken it on Saturday because I'm like, I remember all these people in costumes. <laughs> <laughs> So, so it must have been a one day thing for him too. So. Yeah, but still, not in the background. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I suppose we should have a commercial too. If if you need to, yes. Yeah, those good old Star Wars figures. There you go. Here's the Star Wars X-Wing fighter and the Star Wars TIE fighter. Spaceships and Luke Skywalker sold separately. Batteries not included. I'll get you this time, Luke. We have to my X-Wing. Both with flashing lights and sound. Ahead, there go the solar panels. And Darth Vader got away. Force is with me. Luke Skywalker wins again. Kenner's Star Wars X-Wing fighter, TIE fighter, and action figures all sold separately. And we're back. And I got to mention, like, some of my loot that I got from uh, garage sailing about uh-huh. a week ago. Okay. Okay, so I went to this one garage sale. A guy had a box, like, shoebox of... Oh, uh, they were, like, assorted matchbox, Hot Wheels cars in there, and a few figures. And as I'm digging through them, it's like, oh, my God, 1980... Rebel Hoth soldier. I'm like, no oh, wow. Way. And then as I'm digging further, the Hoth rebel commander. No way. Wow. And further, Hoth Han Solo. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, wow. um, how much for these? There was no price on the box. Oh, 10 cents each. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I mean, no guns or anything like that, but holy crap, loose figures still go for quite a bit. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I had to say, I had to tell the guy, I'm like, yeah, I had these as a kid. and Well, I had Han Solo, my brother had the other two. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we had them. He's like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> uh, uh, if only you knew. The, the value I, of those things. Yeah, I'm, I'm more amazed. That, you know, you only had those, so you didn't find other ones. That's what's weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> but um, oh, I should mention uh, a couple of things that. Uh, well, I'll have links to these, but uh, I'm sure you're aware of the. Is it pronounced Omaze or Maz? Uh, Omaze. Omaze. Um, again, we've got uh, Star Wars Force for Change, so you might want to check that out. Yes, um, yes, and for folks who, who doubt it because of you know the different number of tickets that can be bought by those with uh, a lot of expendable funds, um, the last two big winners on stuff that I partook in were both uh, $25 entries. Yeah. So it is possible... Um, it's luck of the draw, but it is possible. Yep. Uh, proceeds to that one go towards UNICEF and the Starlight Children's Foundation. Excellent. So, good causes for these things. Yes. And I got to mention, too, Matt had uh, emailed me this one. <laughs> He's like, you better sign up for this one for Savannah. But they have a Doctor Who one as well. Um, of course, the Doctor Who one proceeds will go towards Red Nose Day. But you get to be flown out to London, I believe it is, 
and have breakfast with seven of the doctors. So basically all the living doctors <laughs> that we have right now. That'd actually be kind of fun. Yeah. So I'm going to have to, if I'm going to do something about that one, it's got to be soon because I think there's only like 10 days left in that one. That sounds about right. Yeah. Um, not sure how much time we have on the force for change. Um, um, not a whole much more time after that, but yeah, I think a little more time. Yeah. So we'll have uh, links to those. Go check those out. Um, otherwise, I had seen your unboxing. Ah, uh, yes. From a the few lovely, days ago. <laughs> lovely unboxing. Yes, yes. What an exciting adventure. Yeah. Only 27 months in the making. <laughs> yeah. And not And change. counting because you don't <laughs> have your gloves. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. But, you know, you, in 3 to 45 days, I, I may have them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For those of you not in the know, he's got another costume. It is now an AT-80 AT driver. Yes, yes. Uh, from the, the lovely folks at uh, Anovos. Um, these folks, uh, you know, it's kind of a mixed bag with them. Uh, no, they make great stuff. Their, their product yeah. is top notch. Um, their product is not inexpensive, but right. they've had an issue with when they originally started up with the star Wars stuff. Um, you know, they're estimating nine months of production. And like I said, for my, uh, at at driver, it was, I'm at 27 months and I'm still missing the gloves to, com- to complete it. So, <laughs> Well, at you least know. they acknowledge that you still need the gloves, and yes. it's not like something that, oops, we forgot. What? We don't <laughs> have any gloves. What? Um, so, you know, that part of it's been challenging. Um, I had another product, another helmet that I had ordered from them that um, was a, about three months behind schedule, and then when I got it, part of it was broken, yeah. Um, yeah. even though the the box itself was in good shape. Um and of course now they're out of them, so I have to wait till Morgan made before yeah. I can get that. So yeah, I, I've had my my challenges with them. They're doing better, at least now, on responses and um, you know communication and whatnot. But it's it's just it's a frustrating thing. But the nice part is, once I get everything, my edit driver will be pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it's going to be awesome. Just hope they don't send you, like, oven mitts for uh, gloves. You shush. <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> uh, yeah, that looks cool, though. So how many costumes will this make for you? Is this your uh, technically or that'll fifth? Be, that technically would be fourth, because uh, my TIE Pilot, um, what's nice about the TIE Pilot is most of the parts of that can be used for a couple of things. So I did a, an Imperial Gunner. Yep. Um, so you get the different helmet for that. Uh, then you do the an Imperial Crewman, which is just the flight suit, um, you know, the the boots, the the belt, and a you know a, an officer style hat. Yep. So then this will be the fourth one. Um, I also I'm I have a variant a, a 181st uh, Tie Pilot, um, which is a slight variation of them that I'm kind of close on. I got a finish painting and touching up a few things to get that done. Um, then hopefully by middle of summer I might have one more completed that I'm working on. We'll see how that goes. So your uh, AT-AT driver costume for the helmet, are you going to modify that for uh, fans and such? Yes, yes, needs fans. Got to have fans. Yeah. Fans are critical. <laughs> <laughs> It uh, it is it's rough out there, folks. Yeah, <laughs> um, you know they may look awesome, but uh, you know you get out there in a little bit of sunshine, or um, if you're in a venue that doesn't have a very good airflow or doesn't have their air conditioning set right, um, you can get warm pretty quick. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Even when uh, way back in Celebration two and three, and I'm wearing Jedi robes, and mm. you know it's it's May, it's it's a little warm, and yep. <laughs> you're wearing robes and everything else. It's like, <laughs> oh yeah, uh, so many layers. Yeah, so so dang many layers. <laughs> <laughs> Just 
turn up the air conditioning in the place. And... Yes, please. Yeah, that'd be nice. All right. Well, I think we've gone maybe about an hour. Uh, I yeah. Think we're real close. I think we're real close there, sir. All right. And I was looking at the time the whole time, making sure that Travis didn't overindulge. Well, yeah, because <laughs> Todd likes to talk. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think we both did our share of talking. I don't know what you're talking about there, man. We're about equal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, you want to you want to hear one where someone does all the talking? No, I I don't want to put people through that. <laughs> <laughs> There's that one with Corey, like what is it? Podcast number three, Flamecast number three. Oh, that yeah. was painful, painful, painful. Yeah, it like but pulling, it was funny. <laughs> pulling <laughs> teeth, man. <laughs> uh, uh, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right, we'll have links for all that stuff. Um, hopefully, I'll get another we another one of these done um, <laughs> more often than two months apart, and uh, see who shows up for that one. Maybe all we can right. get it. Actually, three people. It could happen. Anyway. You never know. Yeah, this one is kind of a, a last minute. Uh, can we get it done? Yes, we can. Woo! <laughs> So, yeah, we'll see what happens next time. So, All right. All right. So that's Flamecast for this month. I am Todd Pletz. And this is Travis Buckmeyer. And that is a wrap.